Hello everyone, and welcome to Nautical Academy. In today's video, I will discuss ship stability. We will explore the mechanics that govern how these giant ships stay afloat in the water. Ship stability refers to the ability of a ship to return to an upright position after being tilted by external forces such as waves, wind, or a change in weight distribution. But before proceeding further, let us first recall the law of flotation. A solid body floats in a fluid if the mass density of the body is less than that of the fluid such as wood, ice cube, and plastic. We know that the density of water may vary between 1000 kg per cubic meter or 1.0 ton per cubic meter, which is the density of fresh water, up to 1025 kg per cubic meter or 1.025 tons per cubic meter, which is the density of salt water. The density of the wood, ice cubes, and plastics is less than 1000 kg per cubic meter. How about the mass density of the steel used to build a ship? It varies depending on the type or grade of the steel, approximately 7850 kg per cubic meter, which is 7 times higher than the density of the water. So what are the principles behind why the ship can still float in the water even though it is made up of materials with greater density? The principle behind why a ship, even with a much higher density than water, can float is based on Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle states that an object submerged in a fluid is subjected to an upward buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid it displaces. Another reason is, that even if the density of steel is much higher than that of water, the ship as a whole is not made entirely of steel. A significant portion of the ship's structure consists of air, which has a very low density. When a ship is placed in the water, it is acted upon by two forces. A vertical downward force, known as the gravitational force, GF, which is equivalent to the weight of the ship, symbolizes capital W, acting vertically downward through the center of gravity, with a symbol capital G. Next is the upward vertical force known as buoyancy force, BF, which is equal to the weight of the water displaced by the immersed ship, acting vertically upward through the centroid of the displaced volume of water called the center of buoyancy, symbolizes capital B. Now, for a floating body, in this case a ship, to be in equilibrium or remain stable, the two forces should be equal and acting in opposite directions. The buoyancy force acting vertically upward through the center of buoyancy, should be equal to the weight of the ship acting vertically downward through the center of gravity. The center of gravity and buoyancy should be on the same vertical line called the center line. If the ship is heeled to some angle due to external forces such as waves or wind, the center of gravity will remain in the same position as long as there is no shift of cargo or weight within the ship. But the center of buoyancy will move at the low side of the ship because the volume displaced is larger on the low side, causing the center of buoyancy to shift from point B to B1. The buoyancy force will now be acting vertically upward through the new center of buoyancy, which is at B1. In contrast, the gravitational force will act through the original point of center of gravity. Both forces create a couple moment called the riding moment, in which the effect will bring back the ship to its upright position. The point of intersection of the upward vertical line of force, through the new center of buoyancy, B1, and the center line is called the metacenter, or transverse metacenter, symbolized by capital M. The vertical distance from the center of gravity, point G, to the metacenter, point M is called metacentric height known as GM. The metacentric height is critical in ship stability. The ship possesses three types of equilibrium depending on the position of the metacenter. Those are stable, unstable, and neutral equilibrium. Let us start with stable equilibrium. Stable equilibrium refers to the condition where a ship, when inclined by external forces such as waves and wind, tends to return to its initial position. For a ship to return to its initial upright condition, the metacenter, M, must be above the center of gravity, G. In this case, the initial transverse metacentric height, GM, is positive, and a riding arm or riding lever known as GZ is created. 
The writing lever refers to the horizontal distance between the center of gravity, G, and the vertical line of action of the buoyancy force, acting through the center of buoyancy, B1. This writing lever is created on the low side of the ship, thus it produces a restoring moment known as the writing moment, which tries to return the ship to its initial upright condition. The writing moment at any angle of heel is the instantaneous value of the ship's ability to return in its upright condition, measured in tons meters. We can calculate the value of metacentric height, gm, writing lever, gz, and writing moment using these formulas. But I will make a separate video for these calculations. I have already made a video on how to calculate the metacentric height or gm, kindly check the link in the description. Next is the unstable equilibrium. Unstable equilibrium refers to the condition where a ship, when inclined at a small angle by external forces, tends to heel further rather than to return to its initial upright position. For this to occur, the center of gravity is above metacenter. In this case, the initial transverse metacentric height, gm, is negative. An arm or lever was created on the high side of the ship, but instead of the riding lever, a capsizing lever was created. The forces acting on the ship create a capsizing moment, formed by the buoyancy force acting at the center of buoyancy, and the weight of the ship acting at the center of gravity, which tends the ship to heel further at the low side which may result to capsizing. But remember that a ship with very small negative initial metacentric height or very small negative GM may not necessarily capsize. Let us examine carefully the movement of two forces in this condition. When a ship has a negative metacentric height, it tends to heel or tilt to one side until it reaches a position where the buoyant force acts vertically above the center of gravity. This time, the ship will stop to tilt, and she will remain in this position if there is no external force acting on her. The capsizing moment disappeared, and the ship did not capsize but remained in an inclined position. In this condition, the ship is in neutral equilibrium. Neutral equilibrium refers to the condition where a ship, when heeled or tilted to one side, neither tends to return to its upright position nor continues to heel further. In other words, the ship remains in the heeled position without any restoring or overturning moments acting on it. And the metacenter, M, coincides with the center of gravity, G. No riding lever was created, so the writing moment is zero. If there are no external forces applied to the ship, she will remain inclined at some angle. This angle is what we call, the angle of law. The angle of law refers to the angle at which a vessel will come to rest in still water, when it is heeled over to one side. If the ship is heeled beyond the angle of law, the center of buoyancy moves further at the low side, thus creating a riding lever and riding moment to bring the ship at an angle of law. In this condition, we can see that the ship will oscillate about the angle of law, instead of her upright position. The angle of law may occur on port or starboard, depending on the external forces applied. If the center of buoyancy does not move far enough under the center of gravity, the ship will capsize. To avoid this condition, always keep the ship's center of gravity below the metacenter to be in stable condition. I have made a separate video about the movement of the ship's center of gravity. Kindly check the link in the description. That's all for now guys, do not forget to like and share this video, and if you are new to this channel, kindly hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, bye.